Hey guys, how is it going today? I want to welcome you back for another how to basics video. Last time I covered the stove and oven, how to use the basic functions of it, as well as some slightly more specifics regarding the style of model that we have, because I do get a lot of questions about um, different features on the appliances themselves. But there's also that truth and reality. And guys, I said this in the last one, but I'm gonna run through it again really quick too. There are a lot of people in this world for a wide variety of circumstances that don't know how to use certain features of various appliances. Whether it's because they weren't raised with one, it wasn't an option, uh, they just didn't have somebody in their life to show them, or, yeah, I don't know, there, there's so many various reasons. None of those reasons are we here to judge for, but I am here to help teach you uh, some basics. Now, some of this is stuff that I've just had to learn the hard way uh, in my own life as I go along, because I will tell you, I did not grow up with a dishwasher. Um, in fact, I'm trying to think here. My first dishwasher, we got... I didn't have it when I first moved out. The first apartment that Sean and I lived in together uh, when we first got married did have a dishwasher. Uh, it had a slightly newer dishwasher for that time. Now, that was many years ago. And then our next apartment did have a dishwasher. That one was a much older dishwasher. Now, those were very basic ones, but I had to learn how to use them. And I had no idea. My own mother couldn't help me because she had never owned a dishwasher. In fact, when my parents moved into town a year ago, I had to teach my parents how to use their dishwasher for the first time. Um, and I still actually need to run back over. In fact, I need to send this video. So, hi mom. If I send you this video on basic dishwasher maintenance that goes along with using it. So, I'm going to show you mine here in just a second. I'm going to run over the various controls and buttons on it the features that most newer dishwashers have. Also, some basic maintenance like cleaning out the trap in the bottom of the dishwasher and being mindful of the drain lines and things like that. Stuff I didn't know when I started. So, let me sit down on the floor and I'm gonna start showing you all of that. Why am I gonna sit on the floor? Because guys, you don't want me hunched over the entire time. The camera angle is gonna be funky. I'm gonna sound like I'm out of breath the entire time. Nobody wants that. So let's go take a look at it. Okay, so first thing first, I need to explain to you uh, my dishwasher, which I should have wiped down first, but if you watch my stove video, you know that that's not always the first thing I think of. I am raising seven kids and things happen, um, including fingerprints. So this is a GE Slate dishwasher. If anybody wants the very specific um, serial number or model, I can get that for you, but I will show you that sticker right there. This is what my control panel looks like. Now this is a digital one. This has actual push buttons, not the touch buttons. It does not have the manual twist knobs. Now the concept for a lot of this is going to be very similar. Um, so when you start with a dishwasher, some of them are gonna be on the front, some of them are gonna be on the top, some of them are on the top and you can run it while it's closed. Some of them, like this one is a low profile. So we can peek down here and see stuff. I can technically fit my finger in to hit the cancel button if I have to, but that is it. Okay, really quick, you know, before I close, open that all the way. Um, I am going to give you a good look here at some of these controls. Now what I've, you see lit up is what we have just as a standard on ours. Um, I am going to run through all of that with you here at the end of this. But I want to start where you would start when you load the dishwasher, which is going to be with an empty one. I did have the kids empty this for me. We'll see if there's any hidden surprises in here. But first thing first, this is going, let's see, I'm going to turn this way so you can actually read it. This is the detergent um, slot. This obviously is where you're going to put your little dish tabs or if you have um, like liquid or powder detergent, there are fill lines in here. You're gonna fill, usually you'll just fill it up to the top. 
We do use um, the Cascade dish tabs. I have tried many natural ones. This is one thing I just cannot. Yeah, I just cannot. Okay, next thing is going to be your rinse aid. Um, this is your rinse aid spot. So I just open this up and here's what I see. Now this little thing that I can see, oh, that's got some crud inside of there. Um, okay, if you can see in there, see how it's silver at the bottom? That actually means that the reservoir is empty. So at some point here, I'm going to have to go ahead and fill this up. When I do that, now I personally like the OxyClean um, brand uh, drying agent. You can use Jet Dry. Uh, there's a couple different brands of things you can use. In the end, regardless of what you use, you're going to fill it in this hole right here. It's going to fill up into that reservoir there. When you see this fill up to the top, you're good. It's going to quit going in there. So that'll start to fill up too. Now, one other thing, I'm going to see if I can get the light to hit it right so I can show you here. This little knob. Now, guys, I have been using a dishwasher for many years now, and this was actually new to me too. This, you can see the word minimum, and over here it says max. This is how much um, of this is released during that each load. So this, I think by, I have no idea why there's a hair there. Uh, so this by default was set to the max. That means that the maximum amount was being released per load which is not actually necessary. Um, I don't want that much being released. So you can see I have turned it almost all the way down, but not completely. Now that I have learned that little tidbit, turn it down. If it doesn't seem like it's enough, turn it up a little bit each time until you figure out what is perfect for your water. This is gonna be based on how hard your water is, as well as what kind of detergent you're using and how or what kind of dishes you're you're washing in there too. So that is a, a fun little tidbit that I just learned. So you fill that up and you close it back up. You don't do anything else with that one um, until it needs to be filled again. This, you have to put a dish tab in every single load. Okay, I'm gonna turn this. I had a question recently on this vent right here. I was pretty sure I knew what it was. I actually had to go research just so I didn't misspeak. That is actually a vent for steam. Um, you don't want, like, especially since most of the dishwashers have a drying cycle, the heating element that's in the bottom of this, okay, sorry about this. I picked that out of the, the door of there while I was talking. The heating element that's down here is what heats up the dishwasher and dries the dishes but all of the steam that's created has to go somewhere. Now it could come billowing out the sides of the doors and everything else, but this vent helps direct it into um, more specific areas that you want the steam going so it doesn't affect your cabinets or anything else. Now when your dishwasher was solid, you should have this um, waterproof heat tape type stuff. That is also because the steam first place it's going to go is up and out the door. Um, so that is in there for a reason. So it doesn't damage the underside of your countertops or your cabinets. Um, so there is that vent. Uh, it, if your dishwasher has one built on, not all of them do. Some of them do just naturally vent out the doors. But if you do have a vent, um, from everything I read, it actually connects to a drain um, where the excess condensation, I believe, runs back down into the tub. So that's where that goes. Okay, now we're going to look at the inside of the dishwasher. When you are loading, and remember how I told you I was going to find little treasures in here? Look, I just found a fork. Uh, if it slid down in there enough, I think she probably missed it. Um, I see nothing on this one. I'm going to go ahead and close that for a second. My dishwasher actually happens to have this third tray. Um, this is a really handy little tray. It's intended for uh, silverware and whatnot, but um, it gets used for a lot of different things. Okay, now in a minute, I'm gonna stand back up and load a couple of dishes so I can show you some examples. 
But first thing you need to do is you need to pay attention to which direction the jets on your sprayer sprays. Um, there should be one on the bottom of this upper rack. There's also one in the very bottom of the dishwasher that is not attached to the rack. Now, the reason I tell you to pay attention to what direction the jet spray is because you have to be conscious of how and where you're placing the dishes in here. So if you place a bowl in this top rack and it's facing towards this end, these jets are not going to spray it directly. If you face it inward, they'll spray up into it. If it's facing outward at the very end, your most hope is going to be this jet here on the end as it sprays against the door that the ricochet actually hits it. So let me stand up and I'm gonna show you the rest of that. Okay, so having seven children, first of all, it's amazing that this is actually empty, but like I said, I asked my daughter to leave it empty, which means I have dishes in my sink. So this is perfect to show you how we, learn, we load certain things. Now, first thing first, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this little guy out of here and put him in the drawer he belongs in, which is actually right behind me. Now, if your dishwasher has one of these little silverware caddies, most of the time, these are removable. This one is actually handy because it has this giant handle. Some of them actually clip down along the side um, and you can still pull it out. Some of them are easier than others. So let me grab a small plate here. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your smaller dishes on the bottom rack, so like plates, I always put the salad size plates towards the front and the taller plates towards the back. Now, why do I do this? Because when the dishwasher door is shut, this little trap door, now some of them actually fling open, this one does pop upward, so it doesn't require as much space. But we have had doors in the past get caught on dishes and not open all the way, which means the detergent is not released into the load. And then you've got the whole debate about whether to rewash or just what. So just avoid yourself that headache. Watch what you load at the end of this rack. Um, so if you've got a cookie sheet or something, you can usually stand it at the back end if you need to. Now do watch. We've had a dishwasher in the past that had jets off the back wall. So you really have to be aware of what's in your dishwasher. Now some of them are gonna have this handy little thing. I can actually lay these racks all the way down. We're pretty close to it. This works perfect if I have the crock pot or something like that, because you don't want to lay it on top of those tines if it does not fit down into it, because you're going to bend them, break them, and a few other things. So, and just for awkward dishes, it works great. Now, same thing, you can have this tilted outward. So if you've got, well, like awkward holiday dishes and stuff, or uh, larger serving platters, tilt it like that, and you're going to be able to fit things in there a little bit differently. Let me stand those back up. Okay, so, and actually I wanna show too, this one does actually lay all the way down if I bring it this direction. Okay, so now that I've shown you that one, let's go to the top row. Some of the newer dishwashers come with some pretty slick features. Like for example, these glass racks. This is meant to hold stemware, like wine glasses and things like that. Uh, this very rarely gets used in our house, so they usually are folded up. I probably could go ahead and take them off. I just haven't for some reason. Um, our dishwasher does also have these bottle sprayers. Now this is something, if it's a smaller cup, I can clip down with that holding it in place. Works great for little sippy cups and things like that. If it is a larger water bottle, which I do not have one to use as an example, I can actually fit it over the top of this. Those jets are gonna spray, which I can see I've gotta clean these. Um, and just like I said, guys, I'm running out of breath doing this. <laughs> Those jets are going to spray up into the inside of a water bottle and clean it out for you. Um, the only catch is gonna be 
the height of it, you need to make sure that when you close your dishwasher, it's not only gonna fit. Now this rack I could take out, but if I can show you here, there is a mini sprayer uh, right there. Uh, it doesn't have a spinning arm on it, but it is a sprayer. And so you gotta make sure you're not gonna hit things like that. Now another feature some dishwashers have is a height adjustment. And I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to show you this one-handed. Oh, right there. So I push this in and I can drop this rack down so it creates more space at the top that is going to shrink the amount of space I have at the bottom. So I just pulled it back up. We keep the top rack at the top height, which does make it tight for some of our bigger cups, but with tall plates and things like that, it's usually necessary. Okay, so let me grab a bowl here. Okay, now here's a couple things I wanna show you. You've got the row over there. In our house, we like to keep the outer edges for cups. They just seem to fit better there. And then the center row is typically for bowls. Now remember what I told you about the direction of the jets. You want to make sure that those jets are gonna spray up inside that bowl. Now if I flipped it around and put it, now see there it doesn't even really fit. I would have to move it back one. So first of all, this bowl just took up three spaces by flipping it around. When you stack them in here, you can put a bowl here, skip, a skip one section, put one here, skip a section, put one here. So it fits a lot better that direction. And then from, coming from this side, I would skip a section, put one here, and overlap them facing this way just to get everything to fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in there for her. Um, I've got one bowl loaded for her. If you happen to have this handy dandy little tray. Now we do like it. Um, I actually don't have any larger utensils at the moment. Um, some of our big slotted spoons and things we lay up here because they tend to be tall enough that standing them down in the dish tray down there doesn't always work. So sometimes we will lay those up here. Some of my knives that can go in the dishwasher go up here. But the truth is all of these little tines on here are meant for that. You can put so many pieces of silverware up here, it's not even funny. Um, so that little guy can go there. This tray also really works great if you've got little ones. Uh, the stoppers for sippy cups can go up here without the risk of them falling down to the heating element or anything like that. <coughs> now on that note, the heating element, when you are putting things in here, you have to think of the size of the item. Uh, so like a lid from a sippy cup or a water bottle. If you're going to put it in here, you really need to make sure it is like a water bottle. I will open up the top and slide the opening over one of these tines because there are these gaps and things, it, when that water hits it, it is high pressured. I have had things fall out of some of these holes and even between spaces that I were bigger than I realized. And what that can do is cause them to fall down to the very bottom level and land on that heating element. Then when that kicks on to dry, guess what? You've got melted plastic, which we've had happen more than once. Okay, so now that I've shown you the basics of loading the dishwasher, Let's really quick run through <coughs> the basics of starting it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is select your cycle. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bump that to wake this up. Most of the time, you're gonna have a normal cycle. Now, if you have a very small family, you're an individual or something like that, you might be able to get away with a light load, especially if you pre-rinse your dishes um, or what's in there needs to be washed for sanitary purposes, but wasn't really dirty. You can get away with light heavy. This is if you've done a lot of baking, you've got some heavy duty stuff in there. But to be completely honest, in our house, um, there are things we could probably use on heavy, but we always have mixed loads and heavy 
just seems like a lot for certain other things. So that's also when we choose to um, just wash some things by hand. Now, AutoSense, I have never used. To be completely honest, I don't trust machines to tell me how my dishes need to be washed because I don't know what they're testing. And I'm sure they've put some great effort into it and it probably works great for some people. I would rather know what's in there and how it needs to be washed. Okay, my dishwasher has this delay option. Um, I have no idea why you do use this. To be honest, if I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna start it. Now, I suppose if I was gonna go to bed and I didn't wanna hear it running at night, I could schedule it to start in the morning for about the time I'm supposed to get up. But that would be about the only circumstance. Now, I'm sure other people have other reasons to use the delay. It just isn't something that is necessary in our family. Okay, there are a couple of options here. There is a steam option, um, as well as the wash temp, which um, this is a boost or a sanitizing wash or just an average wash. Now we use an average wash. Um, the boost is another version of doing a heavy load. The sanitizing, I mean, that's if you've got some heavy duty, nasty stuff in your dishwasher. Um, that just is not something we use. It also, as you can see, adds a lot of time to the cycles, which I'm sorry, 123 minutes for a load of dishes is already a long time in my opinion. Anyhow, uh, the steam option, I actually, I'm assuming it steam cleans some of it as well, kind of along the lines of that sanitizing. I'm not sure. I don't use it. Okay, now those bottle jets I told you about. If your dishwasher has them, you need to check and make sure whether or not you have this button. If you have stuff loaded onto them and you expect it to wash them out, you gotta turn it on. Okay, now did you see that that actually made it jump up 23 minutes just by adding the bottle jets too? Uh, it's kind of crazy, you gotta pay attention to some of that stuff. Now heated dry is something I see some people use selectively. I personally do like it. Yes, it adds a lot of time. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, see? I just removed a good chunk of time, um, almost an hour actually, by removing the heated dry. So this could get done faster. I could pull them out, dry them by hand and be done so much faster. And certain times we probably do, um, but it's very rare like on holidays if I've gotta get stuff through faster. I think we've used that option. Otherwise we let it run and then we let them cool and we call it good. Okay, wash zone upper and lower. This is, again, if you've got minimal stuff that you're washing or, you know, like a single person, like for example, my grandmother has a dishwasher in her apartment. She absolutely loves having it. Very rarely does she have more than a couple plates up on this top rack or she'll put them on the bottom rack. She does not need the entire dishwasher running for the three or four items she's got in there. She just doesn't go through a whole lot on her own. So this gives you that option to wash just the upper level or just the lower level. Um, obviously the whole dishwasher is still gonna run, but it's really gonna reduce your water consumption and other stuff if you don't have to run much. So that's a really nice option there. Uh, the start, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. When you've got everything set how you want to, your dishwasher's loaded, you hit start, you close it. That's it, it'll start on its own. Now our dishwasher is so quiet, which is actually um, part of the steam there. And there was another feature I was reading about that I'm drawing a blank on at the moment that reduces the amount of water noise you hear. Um, so a couple of our kids are like, I'm not sure if it's actually running. Well, it was running just fine. It just, you couldn't hear it. Over here, these two buttons will light up when everything is done. So when, a load of dishes is done here. This will turn green and it'll stay green until we open the dishwasher. As soon as you open the dishwasher, it resets that. Now there's also another indicator light. I'm gonna show you right here. When we start a load, this light turns orange and it will stay orange as long as the dishwasher is running. Once the cycle is complete, it turns green. And just like this clean button up top here, it will stay lit up and green until you open the dishwasher. Once it's opened, it turns it off and it resets everything until you start another load. So if you've got a dishwasher that has manual knobs rather than buttons, because if you've got push buttons or other buttons, the basics are still gonna be the same. So 
Don't stress that they look different than mine. If you've got a knob though, it's the same idea as the buttons. You just have to turn them to the different settings. Usually you're gonna have the light normal dry knob. Um, you're also gonna have one that tells you know, to choose a heated dry or not. Um, usually in those manual ones, you don't have the wash zone option. Rarely are you gonna have bottle jets, but you are gonna be able to pick your wash temp and possibly something else. But that is going to be the bulk of it. Um, this little guy here, for anybody who's wondering, I do believe that is the sensor that when it closes, it tells the dishwasher that the door is properly closed and engages because as soon as you open this door, if it's running a cycle, if you open this door, it shuts everything off. Um, it's got an automatic drain feature. Uh, it's really nice. It has happened accidentally several times because it runs so quietly, we don't know it's going. So that has been a very nice feature. So really quick, now that we've ran through all of that, if you are hanging out with me still and waiting for some of the maintenance tips that I have not given yet, hang on two more seconds. I am going to pause the camera. I'm gonna pull that bottom rack out and I'm gonna show you how to work in the bottom of your dishwasher. Okay guys, here's what the inside bottom of my dishwasher looks like. First of all, let's run over what a couple things are. This is your heating element. This is what heats up for the dry um, I do believe it also helps heat the water at certain times, but don't quote me on that portion. What I'm coming down here to show you, first of all, now I showed you the jets up here that I need to clean out because they've obviously gotten clogged. These I can actually pull off and I will clean those. You need to be checking your sprayers to make sure that none of the jets are corroded, plugged, or anything like that. It is really important to keep those clean, otherwise your dishes are not going to get cleaned properly. Okay, one other thing though, that most people do not know about. Now, guys, I did not know this until a few years ago, that first of all, the screen down here acts as a catcher. So any um, large food particles or anything like that, that should not be going down the drain is going to get caught on there. Now this one has an additional built-in filter. This, it's you can see it's got little arrows on there to tell me which way to turn it to unlock it. Now guys, I purposely did not clean this before starting this video because I want you to see how nasty this can get. And holy nastiness, I don't even wanna pull that further out. So what I will do, I'm gonna put it back in place for the moment, but you're just gonna take that up to your sink and you're gonna rinse it with hot water. You wanna get that cleaned, because that is nasty. Nobody wants it. Okay, I'm just now realizing. See, I was talking about the filter. This actually came off of one of our large utensils. I thought it was just a red lock piece for that. That stops things from going down the drain that are not supposed to. Um, so that was actually a really good catch by the filter. Okay, now if you're having problems with your dishwasher and it's not draining properly, you're getting some funk smells and other things. First thing you do is you're gonna check this filter. Second thing you do is the screen. This also gets some straight up nastiness underneath it. And I'm gonna turn this bad boy. Every dishwasher is a little bit different. Some of them you can just pull out, some of them you have to use actual screws. But in mine, these little things just untwist. And then I'm gonna be able to pull that whole screen up, which I am not going to do at the moment because I just saw how nasty the first filter was. And through that screw, I could see it is no better under there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull the filter out. I'm gonna wash that really good. I'm gonna pull that screen out. I'm gonna wash that really good. And then it's not a bad idea every so often to run a cycle of dishwasher cleaner. Now you can use straight vinegar. You can buy a commercial cleaner. That is your choice. Um, you guys know I'm fond of cleaning with vinegar if you've watched some of my other videos. Uh, you can see back at the edge, I've got some white buildup. It's because we do tend to have hard water here. And that's a really good reason to, to clean some of this because you don't want that buildup taking over too much. Otherwise, the inside of my dishwasher is not looking so bad. So we're gonna slide this bad boy out. We're gonna check the underside of this sprayer arm. You're gonna do the same thing. Check all of the jets to make sure that they're not looking corroded, clogged, or anything else. I just see some water spots on there, so I think we're okay. 
And then I will pull this all the way out. Um, which I guess I can slide it that far. And I'm gonna check that sprayer up there, which from here looks pretty darn good, as does the top of the dishwasher. So really guys, routine dishwasher maintenance, you can do this monthly if you want to. You can do it every, honestly, probably every three to six months. Uh, you're gonna want to clean all of this out. This dishwasher has been um, in use, not even for a solid year yet. Uh, we're in about 10 months and I have not been very faithful about cleaning things yet. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and admit this particular dishwasher, I haven't touched those yet. That's why that's so nasty. Normally I would do it about every six to nine months. Uh, for sure, more often if I know some nasty things have been going through there or if I just get the urge for it. But guys, do it at least one to two times a year minimum. This is for the health of your dishwasher. If you want your appliances to last, you have to take care of them. And that includes keeping things from getting clogged so that they can function properly. So there's the maintenance side of things. Let me flip the camera around. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm still sitting down here on the floor in front of the dishwasher. Um, I just decided not to get up before I finish this video off. Anyhow, I hope for as long as this was, I hope it was really helpful and that you got something out of it. If you didn't previously know how to properly load a dishwasher, how to run a dishwasher, or how to do the maintenance on your dishwasher, um, I, I hope that you found this helpful. If I missed something or you're unsure of something, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I do my best to get back to everybody as quickly as possible. Um, even the questions. Guys, I get a lot of questions about things I don't actually know, but I am more than happy to help you find out. Just like that little vent on the door. I, I had a feeling I knew what it was, but I did the research first to make sure before I answered. Okay, and since my camera just cut off because I apparently ran out of memory without realizing I was that short, uh, I am not sure if I was in the middle of a sentence or something else, so I'm sorry if that seemed to jump. I'm going to go ahead and sign off though. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or just in support of the video. Also like the video. Don't forget to, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss everything coming up next and I will see you in the next one.